Um, good afternoon. I can yeah. someone hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so um, welcome to today's training on uh, reporting using Kenya EMR. Uh, my name is Bernard Ajuang. I work for Palladium Kenya HMS project. Uh, in today's activity, we are going to be taken through reporting using Kenya EMR. I believe you can see my screen. So on your screen is a, a work plan of what's going to happen between today, 25th, and tomorrow, that's on 26th. Uh, before we focus there, I would just like to remind us of a few things. Uh, some housekeeping. As you are joining, please ensure you've turned off your video. Um, that takes up a lot of bandwidth. So please turn off your video and also mute yourself once you are into the meeting. If you should have any questions, please type it on the chat. That is in between uh, when someone is still making a presentation. Um, and also, um, so at the end of each presentation, we are going to have a, a time slot for one or two questions, uh, which will be answered by our presenters. OK, um, I think that's about it. Please keep it silent. I think that is the biggest ask we have of you. So as we begin, I would like to just direct your attention to the training plan. You've got a set of objectives over there, and then you've got um, the activities and tasks which we'll be going through for today. So we are running a little bit 10 minutes behind schedule, but um, I'm sure we are going to catch up with time. Uh, from 2.30 to 3, we expect to be taken through the Kenya EMR standard reporting, and then we'll conclude today's session with a, with a training on Kenya EMR data tools. I think we'll go through the plan for tomorrow when we commence that same training. So, um, without further ado, I'd like to request uh, Diana To, if you're on the line, please just uh, say something as we commence this training. Diana? Uh, thanks, Ajuan. Confirm if you can hear me clearly. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So, uh, thanks and uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks for taking your time uh, to attend this training. We really appreciate that. And uh, I think Ajuang has put it correctly, the objectives of the training. So this is covering mostly reporting. So I know there have been so many questions of, uh, we have never interacted with Kenya EMR. Do we have a replica of uh, IQ tools? So this is a good opportunity to get um, the reporting side um, from Kenya EMR. Uh, standard reporting where we'll cover all the reports, programmatic reports, um, also um, the, the other reports, standard reports that we report to MOH. Maybe we'll be taken through how to generate all those. And if you have any questions, uh, like Ajuang said, please feel free to just post all those questions there. Uh, we'll also appreciate the feedback from you on uh, any improvements, if any, uh, if we want to improve on the, um, the reports, the reporting, but will also be taken through the ad hoc reporting, how you can just generate your reports or ad hoc reports using uh, Kenya EMR uh, data tools. So um, I can see the time has really uh, moved so fast, so I wouldn't really take so much time. This is just welcome you all. Uh, feel very free um, to post any um, feedback. We will be taking them uh, seriously. Uh, thank you, thanks Ajuang. Over to you. Thanks, Diana. So I'd like to, at this point, uh, 
Okay. Okay, sorry about that. So I I've been asked to give a short overview of this training. And uh, being that it's one on reporting, we are focusing on using Kenya EMR for reporting. Uh, this is the second part of our virtual Kenya EMR training series um, hosted by Palladium Kenya HMIS. Our primary audience has been the, the partners and the training and, and the personnel who will be TOTs and also the end users in turn. So I just want to quickly go into this with the uh, like to acknowledge that this training is supported through our partnerships with MOH, uh, mainly NASCO. It's also funded through the USG agencies and um, it's made possible through Palladium Kenya HMIS project and our various service delivery implementing partners. So um, the learning objectives of currently given as uh, for this particular session for today and tomorrow, that at the end of this training, you should be able to explain how Kenya EMR reports, support evidence-based decision-making, and that you should be able to run correct reports from Kenya EMR for use for your clinical care in the facilities. Number three, should be able to have the skills now to run Kenya EMR data tools to design and generate simple queries and line lists. And also we expect you to learn tomorrow on how to configure and run Duapi in the Ubuntu environment. So those are the practical outcomes that we are looking for at the end of this training. Um, so as we pause for two seconds before I I go into how reporting is useful at your facilities. This is going to be my focus. So why do we need reports? Um, I, I took the liberty to take a simple case of why you'd need reports at your facilities. So if we take a case of a, a PMTCT, use. Um, I've tried to put this in very brief summary. I'll just read through, I think you can follow along because this is a scenario that is quite familiar. So after running an MOH 731 report, the nurse in charge of NC services at that dispensary noticed that there were 15 new clients who came in for first ANC visit. Um, so on review, of the patient records, it showed that they were all coming from a single village. Um, I would like to point out the reason they are doing this review is that this is a very high Hi. number for a small disp dispensary. And a colleague also informs this nurse in charge that the ANC promotional, promotional campaign was carried out at that village about two months before. So, this report at this point is helping this nurse to form an insight. So the nurse uh, gleans this info from this particular info, sorry, from, from the report that the nurse then infers that the high number of clients seeking service has been triggered by the ANC campaign that was carried out two months previously. In conclusion, um, she concludes that the NC campaigns are helpful in promoting the MCH services of which she is in charge. Uh, in terms of intervention, um, she informs the partner, that is the SDP, to schedule further outreach campaigns to the remaining catchment villages. 
Okay, so that is a simple demonstration of how practical uh, the common report we use, that is the MOH 731, can be used to inform decision making and program interventions at, at the SDP level and also at the facility level. So that is, in practical sense, that is what we are aiming to do, even as we look at the individual reports and what they provide. So why are reports important? Um, at the facility level, the reports are important because it helps you monitor progress towards certain defined health outcomes, all right? So in the case of the ANC, the, the, the outcome is to get the mothers in the catchment areas supported to visit the clinic so that they can safely deliver the babies and they can safely be taken care of. It will also help allocate resources effectively uh, when you're carrying out campaigns, because by then you know the numbers you're targeting. It, it ultimately improves the quality of health services and, in, and improves the well-being of the served population. So in general terms, the reports help uh, change or maintain a course of action depending on the data and what it is reading. We've just seen how the data coming through from 731 is going to inform the ANC promotional campaign. It will also help justify the resources that the, the nurses could be asking for with regard to the clients that they are seeing. And also it helps engage the employees and stakeholders to understand the program outcomes and the performance targets. Additionally, it helps in the analysis and, and problem solving for any issues that might arise by before engaging external actors. All right, so that's, we believe is a, the basis for why you would be carrying out reporting and generating these reports at your facility. So I want to, Um, sorry, I think my screen is a bit small. I hope everyone can read. Yes, we can read. Can read from my side. Okay. So I, I was just going into the, the next section, which is basically to outline the key um, reports that we'll be looking at over the next two days. So the standard Kenya EMI reports, the, we have three categories of common Kenya EMI reports. We've got what are known as the common reports, basically the indicator reports. Uh, this particular category includes the MOH 731, the team report, the, the differentiated care report, and TX care, TX car, and the TX set, TX car set of reports, sorry, at drugs and HTS reports. I'm just highlighting the key ones. And there are also the follow-up reports, key among which we've got the missed appointment, linkage referral, active on ad clients, not linked, default addressing, and partner notification reports. So these are the set of reports that uh, in the next, um, 30 minutes, uh, Frida is going to take us through. In terms of cohort analysis, you've got the uh, art cohort reports from six months to 60 months in care, okay? Um, then we've got the specific program reports. These are differentiated based on the, the intervention. So you've got the uh, HIV, TB, MCH mother services, MCH child, PrEP, OTZ, OVC and IPT reports. I'm not sure we are going to have time to cover all these reports in depth, but the way the reports operate is mostly the same, same way. So we are going to see with demonstration of a few of them, we don't have to go into the rest of this. So that's a highlight of the reports. So 
some few considerations if you'll be whenever you run reports at the facility the first question you need to ask is what reports do you need and to satisfy the purpose you have at hand and then how frequently do you need to run this report so we all know you've got monthly you've got quarterly and you've got like weekly reports like the TXK line of, of reports um, the next question is to ask is all the data that you need for a specific request available in that single report so if the answer is no it might mean that you need to run like two reports and either join or, or update accordingly and then the final consideration is what additional manipulation if any do you need to get the required data i know for a fact at times you need to like push this data into excel and further group or or differentiate, filter, and sort as, as necessary. Um, so should you have any questions uh, before we go into the, the, the training for today? Should you have any questions? Palladia maintains uh, a YouTube channel, which is given there. Just search for it by Palladium Kenya HMIS2. We've got video job aids that are better at, at, at helping you navigate your way around the tools and around the products. You can also send an email directly to the service desk at the email address highlighted. And then you can also make a call directly to be assisted by someone at the service desk. So over the next uh, one and a half hours, we are going to be taken through these key topics, you've got Kenya EMR standard reporting, FRIDA, and then finally we are going to have uh, support on Kenya EMR data tools by Kennedy Ubutu, backstopped by Anthony Ojua. I beg to stop at that point, um, and I'd like to request that uh, FRIDA, if you're on the line. Yes, yes, I'm here. Okay. So as I stop my share, Frida can take it away. Okay. Good afternoon, guys. So my name is Frida Uyucho. So first things first, kindly confirm if you can see my shared screen as well as if you can clearly hear me. Yes, from my side, I can. Yeah. Uh, for us, we can. I can see. Oh, okay. Thanks. So I'm um, simply just going to log in. So I'm going to take you guys through uh, Kenya Mar standard reporting tool. Basically, uh, all that Ajuang has mentioned on the standard reports that we have in Kenya Mar. So if you click on, if you log into Kenya Mar, I think we, we all did this last week. The first uh, interface that you'll be able to see is the dashboard. Then when you click home, you'll be able to see the page that you're seeing uh, currently. Okay, so among the modules that we have, we have the reports module. Okay, so the first thing I want us to look at is the ETL concept even before we go into the reports. So uh, even when most of you guys were doing the migration testing, I think you noticed that we were requesting you guys to refresh ETL. So why was this? So basically, Kenya Yamar stores data in two tables. So um, the first table is for production or the data entry that is normally done. Then the second table is for reporting. So the moment we request you re to refresh the data database or re refresh the ETL tables, we are simply asking you to extract, transform, load data from the data that you entered in the production table to the reporting table so that when you go and generate the report, you're able to see your indicators pre-populated with the current figures, okay? So how do you refresh your ETL tables? So you simply click on the ETL admin, the icon that I'm currently pointing at. So if you click on it, this is what you'll be able to see, the ETL administration page. So you have the option of either refreshing the tables or recreating the tables. We highly advise you to refresh the tables. In case you refresh the tables and you're not able to see any change, 
then you can recreate tables okay so and also make sure that when you're recreating the tables nobody is using the system in the facility okay so that is the first thing you're supposed to always do before you generate your report so now let's go into the standard reports that we have in in the kenya emr so for you to navigate into the kenya emr reports the standard ones you just come to the reports module you double click on it then you'll be able to see a whole range of reports so i just want us to go through each service area and see which kind of reports are under which service area in kenya emr so the first thing you'll see when you click on the reports is the common so under common we have reports so uh we have a mixture of reports from day team from care and treatment from surge or leap reports and we also have reports from hts okay if you click on court analysis you'll be able to see the patient follow-up reports uh, and under it will be able to see the art court analysis reports for the various months so we have for the six months up to the 60 month okay if you click on the hiv tab the first thing you'll be able to see on your far left is the cqi reports both for adults and for peds if you look at your far right you'll be able to see the patient follow-up reports that are for hiv program okay if you click on the TB module, you'll be able to see all the patient follow-up reports under the TB program. So those are the reports. If you click on the IPT module, you'll as well be able to see all the follow-up reports for the IPT module. If you want to generate any report for MCH Mother Services, you click on the MCH Mother Services tab, you'll be able to see all the patient follow-up reports if you click on the otz you'll also be able to see all the patient follow-up reports under the otz program as well if you click on ovc you'll also be able to see all the reports for the ovc currently we only have one in kenya emr if you click on the mchl services you'll be able to see the indicator reports, that is MOH710, you'll also be able to see the patient follow-up reports under the MCH services. If you click on the PREP uh, tab, you'll be able to see the indicator reports under PREP, that is the MOH731B report, and also the patient follow-up reports. Currently, we only have two. So how do you request for a report in Kenya EMR? So I'm going to request, we're going to take MOH 731 as, as an example as to how to request a report. So I'm simply going to go back to common. I'm going to click on my MOH 731 report. Okay, the moment you click on the report, that is the interface that you'll be able to see. So on the far left, you'll see two tabs, one requesting you to request for the report and the other one requesting you to back to home. And then from the far right, you'll be able to see a summary of whatever report you'd be requesting and you'll also be able to see when the report is finished. Okay, so we're just going to request a report. So just click on request report so if you click on request report kenya emr or the system will prompt you to put in the date or the reporting period that you desire so in this case you'll select the period that you want the report for so for example i'll just take data for january and since this is a monthly report i'll just choose from january 1st to january 31st Okay, so once you're done entering the start date and the end date, then you just request the report. So while you're requesting the report, you're able to see under the queue, you're able to see the report has been added 
under the queue, you're able to see the status, whether it's processing or whether it's in the queue, and you're able to see the time taken for the report to process. Okay. So as we can see, very many people are currently requesting reports. So I'm just going to ask you guys to kindly just wait until you're done with the demonstration so that you can request the report so that we don't have a long queue. Okay. So once the report has been uh, processed, the report will be deposited under finished. So under finished, you'll be able to see the status will be now completed. You'll be able to see the time taken. And then you now have a whole script or a whole uh, form of download and export techniques for the report that you've requested. Okay, so that is how to request for a report. So what are some of the ways that you can view this report in Kenya EMR? So I'll be working with the very first report. So once the report is complete, you have the option of viewing the report, just viewing in the Kenya EMR database. You also have the you also have the option of viewing the report via CSV. You have the option of viewing the report via Excel. Then I'll talk about the ADX in a few minutes. So if you click on view, this is basically what you're going to see. You're just going to see all the indicators for the report you've requested displayed. So you can scroll down to just, con and you'll also be able to see also the values on the far right, okay? If you click on the CSV, the report will automatically download in the CSV format. So once it's downloaded, you can always click on the report and then you view it, okay? Okay. You can as well view and download the report in Excel. So you simply click on Excel so when you click on Excel, the report will be downloaded. You can now click on the report from the downloaded Excel and just view your report, okay? So whatever we are viewing in Excel, how the report looks like is exactly how it looks like from the NASCOP indicators. Okay, so we also have the option of ADX. So the ADX file is uh, simply a file that allows us to send MOH 731 report directly from Kenya EMR to the DHIS2. So the only time that will require you or, or you'll be required to click on the ADX file is if you're sending your data from your facility to the DHIS2. So currently we have some facilities that are doing that, but not all facilities are doing that. But before you do that, of course, there is going to be a set of configurations that are supposed to be done first before you are able to say anything. So if you click Okay. So if you click on the ADX, this is what you're going to see. So from here, basically what you're going to do to be able to send the air data is just to submit message, which I'm not going to do right now, okay? So just to be clear, before you send your air data, of course, there are supposed to be configurations that are supposed to be done uh, for your Kenya EMR before you're able to send the air data. And you're not just supposed to send the air data. Most of the time, uh, we request you to at least have a concordance of 99% or 100% before that data is sent, because currently that data is being sent to the live DHIS 2, okay? So back to our reports. So now we've been able to see how to request a report. So what happens if you want to drill down your report, like you have a patient who has missed an appointment and you just want maybe to just click on the missed, an, missed appointment reports, see how many patients you have, and maybe one of them are, has come back 
and uh, you just want to update the details or you just want to go to the report, see how many clans have died over time and maybe click the details and just check the profile to see exactly uh, maybe which drugs they were being given, all those information. So I'm going to, uh, we are going to use uh, missed appointments as a, uh, our point of reference for drilling down data. So when you click on missed appointment report, okay, it is exactly the same, the same interface, you request the report, uh, and then there's a summary and there's a queue, then there's the finished part. So I'm just going to request the report. So also something to note, in Kenya MR we have reports that when you request, it requires you to put in the duration uh, for when you want the report, and we also have some other reports that don't really require you to put the duration, okay? So one of them is missed appointment. So when you click on the, the request, it simply requests the report for you. So it processes, then once finished, you're now able to just view the report, okay? So. Also something else, don't, don't mind about my de-identified data. It's not going to be like that in your facility. Of course, you'll be able to see the names of your clients, okay? So as you can see, my data is de-identified, de but don't worry about it. So when you click on the missed appointment reports, this is what you're going to be able to see. You'll be able to see the name of that patient, their unique number, age, sex, last visit date, the last HIV appointment date, the number of days they've missed the appointment, the program that they're currently enrolled in in Kenya EMR, and their phone number. So if you just want to view this client, you just want to go down to the client details and just look at their profile, you can simply just click on the name. So when you click on the name, Kenya EMR will automatically take you to the charts, chat section. So from the chat section, you can easily tell you can easily view the details of the patient. You can see anything on HIV care, whether it's the viral load trends from the graph. You can as well see the CD4 count from the graph. You can see whether your patient was started on ART and details when they were started on ART. You can even check the last time your patient came from the number of visits, encounters from your far left. Okay, you can even see exactly when, which programs this patient has been enrolled in. And when you click on a missed appointment patient, you'll be able to also see the missed appointment alert for the client, okay? So you can basically view details of the clients just from the line list you get from generating the reports, okay? So I'll just close down on this client and go back to reports. So as I, as I have mentioned, there are reports that require you to uh, put in the duration for which you want the reports for before you uh, request them or you generate them. And then there are reports that don't really require you to uh, key in the period. So some of them, as I have mentioned, and we've seen is the missed appointment. We also have the loss to follow up reports. I'm not going to generate these reports anymore because of time. We also have the all patients list. So basically this reports enables you to just, when you request you get a whole line list of your clients and from there you can work on your clients, whether they are lost to follow up, whether they are missed appointments, you can easily work from the line list that you get from the reports in the system without having to go to Excel. Because from Excel, you can only view the, the data, the number, like how many people are enrolled in care three, but you cannot drill down by clicking on the number three and getting the actual three patients. Like we have seen from MOH 731, if, if we have, If we have, for example, patients who are tested, uh, the, for example, now the three patients who are tested as uh, repeat, you can always just click on the number three 
from the interface when you click on view after generating the report, then you're able to see exactly who are these three patients. So as we can see, if these patients were in the and they were enrolled in HIV care, you will be able to see the HIV enrollment date. You can as well see if they were started on ART and exactly when. You are, you are also be, you'll also be able to see the last viral load and the last viral load date. And you can as well click on the patient and you can see the information for the patient. Okay. Sorry. So uh, basically that's it for the report. So what I've done is I've just taken you guys through an overview of where to get various reports, HIV, TB, IPT. And we've also uh, seen how to generate or request a report from KenyaMR. By using, a, by using an example from MOH 731. And we've also seen ways in which you can view this report in Kenya MR, and also how you can download this report from Kenya MR. And we've also seen how you can drill down your report to just see exactly the patient details and also work from the uh, line list to just, uh, maybe if your patient is a missed appointment, to just to work on, on, on them. Okay, so uh, if there are any questions, I'd, I'd beg to stop there and just pick one or two regarding the standard reports in Kenya EMR. Thanks, Frida. Please raise your hand if you have any questions, otherwise we'll want to move to the next session. Oh. Yeah, I, I see most of the questions on the chat have been answered. Um, I want to move to the next session. I'd Hello. No, no. No, no. Yeah, go ahead. So my question is concerning the list of women. Eh? Say yeah. when you are requesting for me. Yes, my name is Ezra from TZ. So I want to know, Mr. Appointment Report, you do not request the duration. Why? Why don't we have people to give us the duration so that I can be able to see the most recent lost food follow up instead of generating the follow up who are more than 90 days or 100 days? So, Ezra, thanks for the question. So, uh, basically, if you request the missed appointment in Kenya EMR, yes, you might not be able to uh, get to request in terms of duration, but you'll be able to see the most re recent patients are normally uh, the ones that are, let me just open the missed appointment. So, so most of the time, the, let me just a second. Okay. So, uh, so when you generate the reports, you'll be able to see the most recent clients being the very first ones in the list, okay? So if you have patients who have missed appointments for two days, three days, they're the ones who are going to be the very first one in the line list, then the, the ones that have missed for very many days are going to come down the reports. Okay, that is clear. Okay. Frida, kindly, uh, there is a question uh, asked by Casper. Uh, okay. If you can kindly show him how to get download for various languages, maybe for current, like current on ERT, and how you can download the language under that. Oh, okay. So uh, let's just go to current on ART, right? MOH 731, eh? Yes. So I'm requesting 
just clicked on the report. Just a second, it's taking a bit of time. I don't know if you can do this offline because I'm seeing uh, my, okay, there, there it is. So uh, let me just uh, request a fresh. So just give it a few minutes to process. So the reason why it's a bit slow is because there are very many people who've requested, so most of the reports have been queued. Maybe you can use even uh, for starting ERT, just yeah. to show where the download button is, yeah. So let me use one that has so current on care. So if you click yes. on the, the, the number for the indicator that you want, then you can, you'll be able to see all those clients, then you can just click on download. and the report will be downloaded in form of Excel. Okay. Uh, maybe Casper can confirm that. Uh, is that clear? Yeah, it's clear. Okay. So thanks so much, Frida, for the mo demonstration of the Kenya EMR standard reports. Um, for those who still have questions, we will take time to answer them on the chat, or there will be a compiled QA for all the questions that will not be as answered at this point. I'd like to request that we move <laughs> the next session to be led by Kennedy Ogutu. Ogutu, if you're ready, please proceed. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, I'll I'll take us through yeah, yeah. the process of um, installing, uh, uh, setting up, and configuring data tools. Uh, let me just share my screen so that uh, we we'll continue. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, you can. Okay, nice. So uh, when you log into Kenya uh, Yemar, the first thing before you, before you continue, you have to confirm that you have 
uh, uh, a valid copy of Kenya Mark Data Tools uh, with you, uh, uh, which you can always download and uh, have ready before you install Kenya Mark Data Tools. So um, uh, you can copy it and paste it on uh, home. As you can see uh, from my screen, this is my Kenya Yamaha data tool uh, directly that contains all the files uh, needed to uh, set up and configure uh, Kenya Yamaha data tool, as you can see. Uh, so um, uh, before you continue, then we need to create a user who will be able to help us. Um, access uh, the ETL tables and also run the Kenema data tool uh, in uh, MySQL. So uh, what we're going to do is to log into MySQL, click the user, uh, give the user, uh, the user the necessary uh, rights and uh, privileges uh, to ensure that they are able to access the necessary files, uh, directories uh, within Kenema. So I'm going to log into uh, MySQL. Uh, let me start for the terminal. So when you type terminal, you will be given options here. We'll select terminal and then log into MySQL. So when prompted for password, you'll enter the MySQL password. There we are. <laughs> After logging in, MySQL, we create the Kenema reports user. Um, create user. Mar underscore reports. So that is the name and will be identified by. Okay, one minute. Can I um, confirm something? Okay. Okay, so maybe the process that Ogutu is showing don't worry so much. This will be done uh, with the package for migration. So you will find uh, for the for the package that will be sent to you the final package for migration. This whole process will have been done. So you don't need to worry about even understanding, um, uh, especially for the M and D M and D folks and uh, data managers. This process done will be pre-done so when you get the package you will all this process would have been uh pre-done so don't worry about the complete just taking you through so that you just know how how that can be done thank you so much diana uh, i hope uh, all of you have heard you do not need to worry about all these jargons Yes, I mean, are we together? So, that is the script for creating uh, the Kenema reports user. After which, uh, we grant the user our privileges. 
tranquilla. Bye. Ah, sí. Bye. Select. Sorry, everyone, I think Kogutu is muted. Someone unmuted me. I think I'm back, but I hope you're yeah. following me. Am, am I back? Yes, yes. Are we together? So we have granted the uh, privileges to the user. Then we flash the privileges and uh, restart my SQL for the changes to be affected. Are we together up to that point? So when we are done creating the user and uh, uh, granting, the, granting the user the necessary privileges, um, we flush the privilege and then exit MySQL. Next, we are going to uh, restart uh, MySQL so that the privileges that we've granted uh, an MR uh, user can be renewed. So we are done with that particular uh, process. Next is to install, to run the script to install Kenema data tools. Uh, we know very well that our directory that is containing the installation files are um, uh, under home or on desktop, uh, uh, depending on where you'd want to access it from. So manual access, access the one uh, and at home, so we uh, cd to the directory. So we'll run the setup script uh, to install the necessary files uh, necessary to run uh, the data tools. There we are. So when you go to desktop, after running the script, you will see the icon for Kenema data tools. 
Run kenye mada data to double click on the icon. Then we do the configurations. So uh, let's create the connection. Um, Creating the connection, um, we do the, the data source connections. Uh, you right click on MySQL. Uh, there we'll have the data source uh, name. You can call it Kenajamar. And remember, um, to ensure that we have the correct username that we created and the password that we use to identify that user. Under URL, uh, we'll do KenyaMR data tools. Um, the user that we created was KenyaMR. The course, and then the password of Kinema report, one, two, three, and then hash. So we'll remember the password so that we don't need to enter the password every time we log in. Want to connect? So, um, uh, from my screen, you'll be able to see that uh, uh, my data tool is already connected to the, the database. The database product name is MySQL. There is the uh, product version that is uh, MySQL 5.6, the driver name that is using, and the driver version. So um, um, I think uh, when it comes to setup and configuration, we are done up to that point. We'll move to the next uh, session. Unless there's any question. If there's no question, then uh, we we'll move to the next. Uh, 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 I think let me return it to Joang so that uh, you can continue from there. Thanks, Kennedy. Thank so, because um, there are no questions, I would like to ask uh, Leon. Yes, yes, I'm here. Yeah, can you, can you take us through the next section on using data tools? Okay. Got it. So as Ken and shares the screen, so as Ken and shares the screen, I'm just going to just give a brief explanation on how the Kenya EMR data tools work. Works. So, Kenya EMR data tools, it's an application that helps us query the database. So, um, we might be having reports, uh, ad hoc reports that are not under the report section on Kenya EMR, and we need the data. And how can we get, how can we get this data? So, we came up with Kenya EMR data tools, which will uh, help us get these reports that are not common, the, the non-common reports which we might be needing or uncommon data which we, we might be needing. So um, just to give you a brief background of how the database Kenya EMR structure is. Eh? So Kenya EMR, um, when you're done with the installation and everything, we run three databases. We have the OpenMRS database, the Kenya EMR ETL database, and the Kenya EMR data tools database. So OpenMRS database is basically where all the data is stored. 
Kenya EMR ETL and Kenya EMR data tools. This is where we run our reports from. All the reports that come, uh, our reports that come from Kenya EMR are run from the Kenya EMR ETL database. That is why um, we insist that anytime before you run a report, you recreate or you refresh or recreate your ETL tables so that it can pick up the, database, the, the data from the OpenMRS database. For those of you who are familiar with IQ Care, simply works the way we do with IQ tools. Before you, you, you run any report in IQ tools, you need to refresh IQ tools so that it picks up the data and, and so that you can get good, uh, good reports. So I'm just going to share my screen and take you guys through how we use the Kenya EMR data tools and just how to, to do some simple queries from the data tools. All those who can see my screen say hi. 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 The hi is of it. Hi. Hi. Okay. Hi. <laughs> so, um, this when you double click on your data tools, this is the landing page. Yeah? Uh, Ken has showed us, showed us how to do all this. So I'm just going straight away to show you the different functionalities that Kenya EMR data tools has. So we're going to start with the, just quite the most important ones. And um, we have the command editor and the query designer. So when Ken was doing his configurations, I hope we were following, we saw that he connected to a database known as Kenya EMR data tools. So first of all, before you run any query, you need to, to know which database do I want to query my data from. So you need to be familiar with the three databases that Kenya EMR has. So you need to know, is it my queries? Am I running them on OpenMRS? Am I running them on Kenya EMR ETL? Or am I running them on Kenya EMR data tools? So if you're not familiar with the, with the, with the databases, you can, Kenya EMR data tools can allow you to connect to all of them, go to the tables, the data, the tables that the database has, and just have a look of, of which data, which uh, uh, look at the tables and see the 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 that if your if the data that you need is there. So we have this icon for metadata explorer. We have the, I hope you can see, the command editor where we will be writing our queries. We have the queries designer and we have the preferences, uh, drivers and, and so on, and the settings. Eh? So we are going to start with this um, query designer. I'll just click on it. And it's at the bottom here, at the on the left side, I hope everyone can see the left side of the 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 panel on the on the left side i have uh, uh an icon where we have the tables huh? so these are all the tables that are on the kenya emr data tools database so for me just to try and get familiar with these tables it is quite easy i can select a table let's say current in care i select it and i drag and drop it on this on this open space, it will give me the columns that are on that table. So from this table, I can see that I have visit date, patient ID, date of birth, gender, enroll date, unique patient number, and so on and so forth. So for example, if I want just to see the patient IDs in this table, I will just select the patient ID column like that. And press this, there is an icon here that looks, that is green in color, that looks like a play icon. It is called the launch query icon. So I'll just press on the launch query icon. And when I launch it, I will get my 
results down here. So I can decide to select more, more than one column. I select patient ID and maybe date of birth and unique patient number. Then I launch my query. It will give me the, the expected results down here. Now, once you have your results, um, we need to move these results from here. So we have an export to Excel option over here. But before I go there, I just want to show you another tab over here. We have the designer tab, which is the tab that allowed me to, to see the tables and also have the syntax tab. So what I've selected from the designer um, from the designer, from the tables that, from the columns in the table in the designer tab, are translated into a syntax, eh? a SQL syntax, uh, just a query. This query translates to what I had selected from the tables in the designer tab and gives me the, the result. So this helps us because you can just be able, if you, you are not quite familiar with writing queries, eh? You can just be able to select the tables that you need, explore them with the data that you might you might exploit. They have the data that you might need, and you and and the KMR data tools will translate it into a syntax that you can share out with someone else. So, apart from that, I can query more than one table. Um, I can select maybe HIV enrollment, put it there. Um, link the two tables for those who know how to do joins in SQL and select something else, patient type, date first enroll, entry point, and I execute the query. So as the query is running, it will run and give you results down here. If I go to the syntax tab, I will find that the query, uh, the syntax of the query that I have run has already been, been added. So Basically, that's it for, for you who wants to design a query using the Kenya EMR data, data tools. So once the query has, is run, I want to look at my results. We have an Excel option, export to Excel. We also have a pivot. You can also export it to pivot HTML and do your pivoting and so on. So the most common one that we use is the Excel. I'll just click on export to Excel. Uh, file name, I'll give it a name. I'll just say test or training. Training data. Then just a simple dialog box. Next dialog, dialog box for, for exporting the, the results. Next. So, it will give me an option. Eh? You want the data? Hello. To go for more, Jama, I'm going too fast. It's okay. It's okay. You're yeah? good. You're good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so, thank you. So, I can select. I select um, with header. The reason I'm selecting with header is because I want my data to appear with heading, this patient ID, date of birth to be on top. And empty if null means, means that anything that is written null will come out empty. I can also select that. So I'll just click on OK. And the exporting will start. And it will give me my data in Excel format. This is a previous document that I had tried to open. Let's discuss. It. Yeah, so here I have my data, the separator options. So for this part, eh, separator options, you need to be very careful. If you do not select them properly, your data will come out jumbled. So for example, let me just, um, I have, I hope all of you can see down here where my, my cursor is. This is a preview panel 
this is just a preview of how your data will show up in Excel. So, for example, if I remove the separated by, I uncheck on it and select fixed with that. Eh? Do you see the way the data is? Eh? It's not separated by anything. It just comes out jumbled up. So I can get separated by, and I remove semicolon, comma, tab, comes like that. When I put comma, semicolon, and tab, it, it's, it looks a little bit better. Yeah? So make sure before you export your data to Excel, you preview it down here, just so that you can know how your data will come out in the end. So, and it is it is quite easy. You'll just uh, play around with the separator options and it will show you the correct thing. So, we'll continue and I'll just press on OK. And I'll get my data in Excel format. Now, um, if I want to, to move this to, let's say, Windows. Um, most of us are familiar with Windows. If I want now to move this data to Windows, it's quite simple. You just save it, come to File, select Save Us, give it a name on top here, and select uh, the destination where you want to save the file, if it's desktop or documents. And here on the format part, eh, you just kind of make sure you scroll down and select the format in which you want your, your file to be saved. So we advise that for wind, if you want to, put, to save it, to have a look at this data in Windows, it can go like this, but the best way to save it is on Microsoft Excel format 2007-2013. I will select it, press on save. It will ask me this document may contain formatting, saved, and I will select use Microsoft Excel 2007-2013 XML format. If I say use ODF, I might be have I opening the file when I get to. Exactly. That is the first part of Kenya Yamar. So um, I'm going to, to just go through the second part quickly. We have seen how we can design our own query and run it on Kenya Yamar data tools. So I'm going to show you, we have a, scenar a scenario where the query has already been designed. Maybe you needed some data and were not, and uh, you did not, you do not have the uh, capacity to do a query or uh, we have provided a query that the that you need to run so i already have a query with me and i needed to run it on kenya yamar data tools so there are two ways to do it first of all let me just close this i will open my data tools Test them. I had a query earlier. So I will open my data tools and I can go to this command editor. I hope all of us can see this icon that has a pencil like writing on a paper. I will select command editor. And once I'm here, I can copy paste the query that I had uh, that has been shared with me. So it's quite simple. Copy paste so this is just a query that uh, just for 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 the purpose of this training so once i've pasted it there i can just simply select the launch query the query will run and give me results and from there i, ex I export the exact the results to excel i hope to copa moja Yes, to cover more. Okay. Now, um, the other way to do this, eh? I will come. I have been given a query, yeah. 
So um, the query is in a text format or an SQL format. The other way to do it, I can just come here, then click on file and say load query. From here, I will se select where my query is. If it's on the desktop, it's just like uploading eh? on the desktop where it is, if it's on the data tools, the folder where you've saved your query, then, sorry, I do not have a query saved here, but it is quite simple. The folder where you've saved your query, maybe I might have one. Uh -huh. Yeah, for example, this, I have this query. So let me just start again. I want to load a query. I've been sent for a query of someone has shared with me a query that I need to, to run on data tools. First of all, we say before you run any query, you need to know the database in which you are querying from. The first thing you need to identify is which database am I querying from. Then make sure that the connection that you are using on Kenya EMR data tools is connected to the database that you that, you're, that you want to query from. So I've gotten my query. I'll just come to file, load query. Um, navigate to the folder where the query is. Select the query. Next. Select the connection that I want. The schema will be there default. And it will, it will load for me the query. And anything that I need to do, the only other thing I need to do is to launch the query. Once I launch the query, the query will run successfully. Yeah, I think I've covered quite everything on data tools. Unless there is a question, uh, I can check one or two questions. Thank you. Thanks, Leon. Are there any questions for Leon? I do not see any on the chat. Yeah, Gatia. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you very much for the presentation. My question is that um, when you are using the tables and you are picked and dropped on the, <clears throat> the right side, uh, maybe if you have picked like several tables, how do, do you declare the the way you have joined the table so that uh, the output will be what you uh, desire? Should I take several or if there's another one, then, then I answer all of them at once. Any other question? I have a question. Yeah. Uh, after exporting, uh, after converting the file into Windows Excel, is it going to, to open with maybe latest Windows, I mean Office, like uh, for example Office 2016, will it open the file or it, it will not? Okay. about uh, ensuring that you're connected to the right database, the three OpenMRS, KenyaMR ETL, and KenyaMR data tools. Someone is talking, they are so low. So I'm asking, uh, you mentioned about uh, ensuring yeah. that. Yes? Yeah. yeah, sorry, there's someone talking. Is that Phyllis? Yes, John, this is Phyllis. You are asking so a question? Yes. There was a mention that uh, we, are we are supposed to know which database you are connected to. Yeah. How do you know whether you are connected to, maybe you can, Leon can demonstrate, how do you know whether you are connected to the OpenMRS or Kenya EMR data, the Kenya EMR ETL? I didn't get that part. Thank you, Philip. So, Leon, you want to respond? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, let me respond to those. So, um, I'll start with Ngatia. Um, you are 
just uh, just to understand your question you're asking how to do the joints between tables yeah to declare the joints how you have joined them so that when you run the output would be what you have declared maybe so, hello maybe just just the relationship between the tables so that when you run and the output you are able to know that uh, you are picking from it is even then you have added other fields from the other tables okay okay um i don't know if you saw how i did it let me just it again quickly A minute share my screen Naniona, oh, I mean Monona. Yes, yes. Okay, so um, we have several tables. Eh? I've selected the current in and uh, maybe HIV follow up. Eh? So if I want to do a join between these tables, you know? Kabisa, yes, very true. Ah, yeah. So for this, select like the, I can see we have two columns that are the same. So I'm going to join on patient ID, yeah? Yes. So I'll just uh, say drag and dropping, yeah? I'll just do that, yeah? Yes. So once I'm here, yeah? I can edit the join. Eh? You see this? Okay. I can edit. Okay. Oh, is it HIV follow up? Should this be equals to this? Should this be greater greater than or equals to this? And I can select all rows from HIV follow up or all rows from current in care. So I can just be able to edit the join. This will also happen for all subsequent tables. That Hello. Okay. I Hello. Yes, I think it's clear. Hello. Yes, thank you. So let me just go to the next question. It was about yes, when you do it in Excel, it will uh, it will uh, it will open with uh, 2007 to 2013. It will just open even for Excel 2016. It will as long make sure that you've selected it you've saved your file in the excel format so it will open so the final question was about connection to the databases and um, this i'll just take back kidogo uh, so um if you can remember when ken was doing the setup eh, he right clicked here and said new data source there was an icon for my there's a this is my sql eh? selected new data source so for example the database that i'm uh, connected on this is the url eh? kenya yemar underscore data tools so this shows me that i'm connected to the data tools um to the data tools database i want to add another connection eh? let's say i want to add a connection to kenya yemar uh, etl i'll just right click say new data source just go through the same process and i might call it kenya emr underscore etl now on the url now this is the most important part eh? this shows me that the connection has already been set to kenya emr underscore etl if I was connecting to data tools, I will just remove ETL and connect to data tool. Okay. If I was connecting to OpenMRS, I will remove all of this and connect to OpenMRS. That is the only thing you need to change. But at the moment, I'm connecting to Kenya EMR underscore GL. Um, I'll just use the root user. Say, remember password, auto connect on startup and connect. 
then okay. Now I have two connections. I have Kenya EMR NTL and I have Kenya EMR data tools. I can add another connection, let's say for open MRS, quite simple. Open MRS. Still use the root user. Input my password. But for you guys, you have already created the user will, will is has already been created. So we'll just use Kenya MR reports, the user that Ubuntu had showed us. And connect. I have three databases. So I can either do this. I want to, if I want to connect at one database at a time, I can say I want to connect to Kenya MR ETL. I can disconnect from the two databases. Eh? So I have this icon. I hope all of us can see this socket icon here. I can just disconnect on it, disconnect on this other one. So when I'm running my queries over here, I'm sure they are just running on Kenya EMR. I'm sure that they are running on Kenya EMR ETL. So if they are not, um, if all of them are connected, just a quick one, and I come here on my query designer, I can just select this. I will have the different databases that I'm connected to, uh, that are avail available. I can have Kenya MR underscore ETL. I can have, this is data tools. I've just called it um, DQA, and I can have the open MRS. So I select the table that I want, the database that I want, and just run my queries. The same will happen even on the query designer. It will ask you which connection do you want to connect to. So I want to connect to Kenya MR, ETL, okay. And it will give me it will give me the tables that are on Kenya MR, ETL um, database. I hope that was clear. Yes. Okay, so just before we leave, I'm just going to show you one thing. So we also have a, an option of pivoting. I hope you are quite familiar with the pivot tables. So I'm just going to run a quick query. I'm going to use data tools. So I've run the query and it has given me the results. So we have Excel and we also have an option of pivot, having pivot tables. So I'll just click on the pivot. So it has opened for me the HTML form on the, on the browser. So I would want to know um, just the simple pivoting. Let's say uh, this is OK. I want to know the count. Um, how many unique patient numbers I have. The, the several unique patient numbers, or I can use, let me use what it is here. Um, I can see the all the enrollment dates and the unique patient number matched to each date. So I can see, for example, here, this person was enrolled on 2005, second. Leon. Hello? Leon. Yes, yes, yes. 
Yeah, do you mind maybe using a query that has variables like sex um, or something? Let me let me see. Okay. You you can you can pick on uh, the the enrollment uh, the enrollment table or even the uh, I mean um, current in care. So you can just design that query and then you get to the pivot. Okay. Thank you for that. We can use the TL. Um, we can use this. So. HIV enrollment. Yeah, you can actually do current in care and HIV enrollment. Yeah. Maybe you pick gender, something like um, their entry point uh, on the enrollment part. Yeah. And uh, we can even pick unique patient number. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's work with this. So I just run the query, and, uh, export it to pivot tables. Yeah, good. So I can have gender and entry points. So from the pivot tables, you can see that. From the different from the different entry points, for example, CCC, um, we have 882 males and 260 females. Um, just uh, for entry points, so for CCC, we have 36 males and 20 females, and in total we have 56 um, clients who are their entry point is CCC. So. This is the beauty of the pivot points. It gives you a, a, a quite some a, a different view. If you want to visualize your data in a in a different way that is not Excel, you can just export it to the pivot tables and try and play around with it for the different visualization effects that you will need. Yeah, can you try additional ones? Maybe uh, I can see we are on count. You can have, you can let's have, see the lockdown. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I think that's okay. That, that's okay with this, yeah. Oh, no, so this is a table. So which other options do we have? You can do heat map. We can do heat map. We have the line chart, the bar chart. So. This is just a table here. Yeah. Can, Can you even do heat map? It will show you where the where the the where it is extremely red. That is where the more the numbers are. So the distribution, yeah. We can we have different things. You can just play around with it. The line charts, it will. It will give you different visualization visualization effects. To go pamoja. Kabisa. Ah yeah. So I think I'm done with my part. I can just take it back to Ajwan. Thank you. Thanks, Leon and Anthony. Um, there, there is a question on uh, whether there is some material someone can refer to with regard to data tools. Can you confirm this is available on YouTube or on Jobbase? Please, Leon. Yes, yes. Um, we, it is available both on YouTube and on Jobbase. I think the link has been pasted on the chat. And uh, also on our, when you go to the National Data Warehouse, we have the resources page where you can get the training materials. This is also available there. Yeah. Mm. I want to go.
udah udah nilingi hiyo so thank so much leon i think uh, in terms of our training for today what i'd like to note is that uh, using the tool like data tools it takes a bit of time for you to get to be good at it so it's not something you're going to run straight off like the the kenya emr standard report so you must uh, take your time use it a little bit more before you get to be more proficient at it so uh, like leon has noted we've got the job aids on video and also the, the the text one that you can refer to at your own time we are coming to the end of uh, this training for today unless there is any question from someone okay so i'll take that as a no so we thank you so much for your time for today so just to recap today we've covered kenya emr standard reports uh we've looked at doing custom reports and then listing using data tools for tomorrow's lesson i think for those of us who are moving to kenya emr and do not have additional servers or windows machines you want to be there so that you'll be able to set up um the wapi in ubuntu environment this is the next platform that we are moving to so this assumes you don't have other windows machines we hope to take about one and a half hours tomorrow we know it's it's friday but please be punctual we aim to complete by 3 30 pm unless there is um any burning question Tony, do you have something to say before we go? No, no, uh, 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 maybe just to say that uh, uh, for any hard hoc reporting, um, people will mostly be interacting with the data tools database. Uh, OpenMRS and ETL are actually meant for uh, use within Kenya EMR. So anything outside, uh, we would encourage anyone to just use um, the data tools database. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Anthony. Um, Diana, are you still on yes. the line? Again? Hello, I'm looking for Diana too. Kezia, you, you've got something before we close? There was one question uh, asked by Kevin. Yeah. Uh, do we have unique IDs for J or we assume patient IDs are unique in all the tables we will be using for all joints? Maybe Leon can respond to that. Oh, okay. So um, I think all, all data sets, all tables, um, so first of all, we have the, the, the demographics table that has uh, from the internal patient ID, um, there is the unique patient ID. But I think for joining internally, patient ID should just do the, 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 the job. It's unique across the system. Okay, thanks Tony for that. <clears throat> Is that the question, HP? All right, so thank everyone. Thank you so much. We look forward to the training. Adjun. Yeah. Yeah, just, uh, I think there's a request from, I think, uh, two guys hmm. requesting, the, requesting if the training can uh, earlier than 2 p.m. There's a request from CHS Shinda if we can start from 1 p.m. tomorrow. Okay, so we'll, that would mean we might have to, sorry, we, we'll just take it into consideration 
people already have got some other meetings planned that might bring some conflict. Okay. We, we'll see about it, but um, we are not promising to reschedule the training because the staff performing tomorrow already have got other, other commitments. I also congratulate with her. Hello? I also congratulate with her from Achi. Okay, that, that's okay. So we'll see if the trainers can be available earlier. And then the problem though, that might mean rescheduling and sending the link again to everyone in this training. So I'm not promising guys, uh, just observe time. Tomorrow should be a shorter session. It's only the WAPI. It should be maximum of one and a half hours, but most probably it will be less time. So just keep time, we should be done by 3, 3, 20 there. Okay. All right. So um, I would like to bring the meeting to end at this point. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, partners. Thank you, the end users who've been in this call. We look forward to your participation in tomorrow's meeting and also in future meetings. Thanks, everyone, and have a good afternoon. Bye. Bye. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.